Hey guys, welcome back to episode 11. We have another great episode for you guys. This episode has a lot of great laughs, some good advice, some good conversations. And I'm just so excited for you guys to meet this new guest. But before we do that, I just wanted to extend an invitation to you, yes you, that you could be the next guest on The Sky's the Limit. I want to interview you, I want to talk to you, or someone you know who is a passionate artist or creative out there. Just go and fill out the Google submissions either in our Instagram bio or in the bio on the YouTube video because I want to talk to you guys. Please, oh yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. Alright guys, without further ado, Josh. Roll that you intro! Welcome back guys, thank you for staying with us, and now on to this next guest. Alright, we met in Newport Beach, California, we went to the same high school, and there may or may not be some embarrassing videos of us coming up. So you're gonna want to stick around for that, uh, I don't know who gets more embarrassed, this guy or me, um, we'll see. In early 2017, he released an EP called This Time. He's releasing new music all the time. He just came out with a new song. There was a new song out tonight with this video. Guys, it, there, there's just so much going on in this guy's life. He was born in California, moved to London, is now living in Virginia. He's honestly such a nice guy. He's humble. I'm so glad he got to be a part of this, and I know he's going places, and I'm so excited to introduce you guys to Peter Larson. car waiting outside I told you I'd be alright But I forgot what loneliness feels like Don't forget me when the leaves turn brown Or as they slowly fall to the ground I ask God that you... Hey Peter, how are we doing? It's going great, how are you Tristan? No, I'm, I'm doing great. Um, uh, great. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. <laughs> to, to put a little backstory for um, everyone watching, you and me have actually, we've, we've been in a video together. We've been, yeah. I think there was a video where we were, we were actually Dude. singing together. Hey, hey, Josh, can you play that video? Here we go. <laughs> Boom. I'm kind of beefing with Peter Larson. Oh. I think he's like writing a diss track about me. She said you guys have some beef, some like weird stuff. Seems like you have me a- Me and Lorette? Why at all? There's no I've beef never between you guys? I've or... never spoken to him. Like I barely know who he is. Yeah. Oh no, Lorette's great. <laughs> Videos play. Oh my god! Yes, we were, we that was young amazing. Kids. That was great. <laughs> we were we were late. That was. I remember being in that car. All right, let's let's get into this. So, so okay. you've lit, which I didn't know this. I did some research. I didn't know you lived in London before. You didn't um, know that? I, I did not know that. Um, I was like, wow, that's really cool. And you've yeah. lived in Southern California where we met at school, mm -hmm. and um, now you're in Virginia. What place do you think has affected your music? Um, specifically and maybe influenced your music the most? Yeah, so I think every place that I've lived has had a huge impact on my artistry. Um, but I will say London, living in London for a year in eighth grade, um, that was the first time that I saw myself as an artist. Um, up until that point, I was always just playing other people's music. I was playing, um, I was classically trained on the piano, um, just playing other pieces that people told me to play. Um, and then in London, I picked up the guitar, started singing. And once I've been playing piano since I was six. So once I had piano, guitar and vocals, I was like, okay, wait a second. Like I can start writing actual songs that have structure to them. I can come up with my own lyrics. Um, and I started doing that in London. Um, I was an emotional eighth grader, emotional 15 yeah. year old or whatever, um, moved, had to move away from 
from all of his friends for a year um, because I was living uh, back in California at the time, Southern California, moved to London for a year. I thought it was like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing ever to happen to me. I'm going to write all these sad, emotional songs about it. Um, so, so I started writing my first songs in London and that's the first time I think I started seeing myself as an artist. Um, so London was huge for that. Um, I feel like home, California is still home to me. I still consider it home to me. Um, and Southern California is kind of where the grunt work happened. Like I came home from London on this artistic creative high where I thought I was the best and then quickly realized that I wasn't um and I actually have to get good at guitar I can't just play four chords and come up with songs that uh sound amazing even though some people do that um today but um I I realized that I needed to work at it and I think that for the four years of high school for me were just drilling learning my craft like refining my craft and then college for me in charlottesville in virginia college has become the place where that stuff is starting to blossom i'm starting to see like the result of all that work in high school um and so yeah it's it's been awesome i yeah we'll we'll get into talking about some some of the new music but yeah um, i feel like that that that's a really that's a that's a great story in trusting the process too and not like rushing through it and and feeling like you need to get to the end Exactly. Um, as an artist, the most important thing is to just enjoy what you're doing um, in every moment and not to yeah. think that there's something better down the line, you know, but just yeah. to fully immerse yourself in the moment. Um, the journey is so important. The journey of yeah. it all is so important because I feel like you're right. A lot of artists do get caught up in that end result. Yeah. Yeah. They have this idea of what success is. And mm. if they don't get there, they won't be happy with their creative process but the creative process is a process you know and so you can't yeah you can't rush it you can't um you can't shortcut it um it has to happen naturally so so you have a you have a song um out right now can can you tell us the inspiration on that on that song and kind of like where it came from yeah so senior year of high school um there you know everyone there's there's kind of like all these people in their dating relationships, you know, um, trying to figure out what to do next. Um, Mm -hmm. Cause maybe they're going to different colleges. Maybe they're going to different, um, different cities. Um, And that song is inspired by that, that reality that people live in senior year of high school. Um, But really it's, it's about any period of life where there's someone you love and life is bringing you to a different, place a different location is leading you away from that person um and so it's a sad song um and it's about being afraid that this person you love is going to fall in love with someone else um, when they're gone um when they're away when they're doing the things that life has led them to do um life has has um brought up in their in in their story um so it's a sad song um and that was the the main inspiration. Um, but recording it was was incredible. I've been sitting on that song for a year now um, because I wrote it senior year, and I was like, "Gosh, I need yeah. to record this at some point." Um, and I finally did, and so it's awesome. It's out on Spotify, all streaming services. There you go, go um, check it out. Yeah, go check it out. Shameless plug. Was there a, a specific? event in your life that kind of triggered that 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 made that happen or was it more like you an outside perspective of just seeing that this is happening it was an outside perspective um Mm -hmm. a lot of my songs are like that i'm writing about things that i'm observing um not things that are necessarily happening to me um i write a lot of those songs but i often keep them to myself um because songwriting is like journaling to me it's like a process where I'm, I'm writing songs for myself. I'm writing songs to process the things in my life. And some of the most personal songs are never shared. Um, And I'm, I'm fine with that because they're for me. My art isn't, isn't always meant for other people. It's sometimes just for me. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And I, I completely respect that. And so, so do you think this will be a thing that will last for, a majority of say your career or your just musicianship of, of like 
your songwriting is kind of an observation and then maybe the songs that are more in yourself are going to stay with you? Well, so this is interesting because I think about this a lot. Um, there's songs that I've written like three years ago that if I had like shared them with people, shared them with the world, like at that time, it would have been really uncomfortable because the people that the songs are about are still in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but say if I come back to that song, I still think it's a really good song. Um, and it's just about when I feel ready to share, you know? And, yeah. and if it's, if it's five years from the time that I write it, um, like maybe that's when I share it. Like there's songs on people's albums that were written like five years before the album was released. Um, and that happens a lot. Like I have crap ton of voice memos on my phone. I wish I had my phone, but it's filming right now, but <laughs> I could show you, I could scroll like, like three years and there's like wow. so many song ideas, um, lyrics, full, full written songs that um, no one's ever seen. And mm -hmm. Sometimes if I'm sitting down to write, um, where I sit down and I say, okay, it's time to write now. And I don't have an idea. I'll just like play roulette. Like I'll go through and just scroll <laughs> and like put my finger down and be like, okay, what was this idea? And I'll play yeah. it and try and develop it. Um, so it's like, I have this library of ideas just floating around. And so you never know when an old emotion and old feeling is going to come back to the surface. Um, That's really cool. Yeah, but it's, that's what's so fun about the creative process is like, like I was going through the the song that is coming out on November 20th, The Little mm -hmm. Things. Yeah. Um, I was curious how that song had developed. I was like, how did I, how did I actually come up with this? And so I went back and I did some, some scavenger hunting on my voice memos to find all of the parts of the song as they developed. And I found like seven months ago, the guitar picking part that I ended up putting on the song Wow. I found it with different lyrics, um, different chord progression. And I was just like, wait a second. Like, <laughs> that was in the back of my head somewhere. And I pulled it out to write this song. And that's what's beautiful about the creative process. It's just like this constant flow of ideas. And um, yeah, you have to be open yeah. to taking old ideas and trying to create something new all the time. Definitely. Um, For your listeners, what experience do you want your listeners to go through or uh, more specifically what, like what emotion do you look to evoke in mm -hmm. it, through your art, through your music? Yeah. I, I have to admit, I write a lot of sad songs um, and I, I haven't released too many songs mm -hmm. after November 20th. I'll have released three songs on Spotify there we go. Um, and all, all streaming services, but it's like, it's like, I, I write a ton of sad songs and I have to like make sure that I give people, give listeners another side of me too. Um, it's yeah. easy to sit down at the piano and you're feeling emotional and feeling sad and to just write about um, heartbreak, loneliness, because those are the cliche things. Um, but what I hope to grow into and what I hope for the future is that I can write songs that take people on a journey from sadness to joy, from excitement to boredom, even like I want, I want people to experience the whole spectrum of emotions through my music. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't want to be put in a box where it's like, Oh yeah, this is the sad love song, broken heart, love songs kind of guy. Or like, this is the, the hype, like pop music kind of guy. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of emotional pop music, but like radio hit kind of thing. Um, I don't want to be put into a box. I want to be the kind of guy that someone could hit play on and play the whole album and be like, whoa, I feel like I was just taken on a journey. Like, I feel like I just experienced a story. Yeah. Um, that's what I hope. Um, that's awesome. So, yeah, wow, that's, I want, that, that's really cool. I like the, the, the whole journey, journey through the album with yeah, me type of thing. Yeah, I want authenticity. I want people to know that what they're listening to is coming from my heart um, because it's what I want them to hear. And it's what I um, want to be known for. Um, and so I, I really like to ask every single person that comes on this show, this mm -hmm. what's one piece of advice you have for creators and artists around the world right now, during the time we're living in during um, this, this great year of 2020, 
I know you've already said a lot of advice today, but what, what's like one piece that just like maybe just really sticks with you? I think there's this, there's this common misconception that as an artist, in order to be a legit artist, you have to be like unapproachable in some sense. Like you have to be this like figure that's like high above and like everyone looks up to them and they're kind of glorified in a sense. Um, and they're not approachable. And I think that to be a good artist and to be someone who can engage with their audience, you have to throw that out. Like you cannot, you cannot see yourself as someone higher than like your listeners. You can't see yourself as someone who should be adored. You have to see yourself as someone who is in there with your listeners and you're going on a journey with them. Yeah, what well, did? Thank yeah. you for that. And then always of the course. last minute, I give like the last minute to to you to to tell us where we could see more of you. I know November twentieth, cool. we're getting a new song. I'm very yeah. excited for. Um, a song just came out. Uh, can you just tell us everything? Where can we see more of Peter? Yeah. So the first thing you can do, everyone, go do this. Follow me on Spotify. Follow me on Instagram. Those two things are huge because um, you'll hear. You'll be the first to hear about new music, new releases. Um, so do that. Fall on Spotify, fall on Instagram. Um, and then, yeah, do that. Um, and then go stream my music on my Spotify artist page um, and add me to your playlist. If you add my music to your playlists, it tells the Spotify algorithm, oh, people like this song. And then it puts me on other playlists. So do that. Add me on your playlists um, and share it with your friends. Tell three people. Um, three other creators about my music um, and I hope you enjoy it I really want it to be something that you can immerse yourself in and really feel something through um, and yeah I, I, I want to invite you into my journey like we were talking about um, I want to be a, be a part of this with you so um, awesome. yeah stream me hey. listen to me uh, that's all yeah. Thank you so much, Peter. It's always it's always fun talking to you. I, I I feel like we always have good conversations. Yeah, no, you're great, Tristan. I love I love this show. Like this show's awesome. Thank you, dude. Ho- Thank you. I hope it goes, I hope it goes places. Thank you so much, Peter. I love you. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> love you too, Tristan. It's guy love between two guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Episode 11. That's it. Peter Larson, go check him out. He told you where to check him out. And guys, it's a great day to have a great day. Peace. Hey, you got to the end of the video. How are we doing? All this is, is I really want you to subscribe. I want you to go watch our other artists on STL. And let me know what you think. Please reach out to me. I want to talk to more people. Please. I love you guys. And always remember, it's a good day to have a good day.